what is up guys and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be taking a look at using loss of scaling and moonlight to run 90 frames on the steam deck oled if you saw my previous video where we used my bespoke mini pc rocking a 5700u and a 6600 xt we used that in tandem with lossless scaling and that is a dual gpu system so it has less of the overhead bottleneck that lossless scaling has uh, because it has running two gpus at the same time and we took that image and we streamed it over moonlight with lossless scaling into the steam deck oled we did not get the 90 frames or the frames that it says it was outputting it was all broken things just didn't work properly at all it was worse to use loss of scaling in that way than it was just a poor way to use loss of scaling and i wouldn't advise doing it but this is something a little bit different what we got going on here is there's windows running on the steam deck oled i know a lot of you are like no don't use windows blah 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 yada yada Lossless scaling works great on Windows. Yes, there is a workaround to get it to work on SteamOS. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I know it works well with Windows. Um, unfortunately, Windows doesn't work well on the Steam Deck. And it's mainly just the controls, but there's ways, there's workarounds for that. Even after that, it's still kind of clunky. It doesn't really work as intended. It's not as streamlined as SteamOS. But lossless scaling works flawlessly. So you pick your poison, right? What we got going on right now, uh, we are currently on Windows. Um, you'll see right here we have the bespoke mini PC over Moonlight and we have loss of scaling. The game we're going to choose today is Helldivers 2 because even though the bespoke mini PC is pretty a beast system, um, we're only going to get, you can't, you won't be able to see it, so you take my word for it. It's about 62 frames right there. And But our settings are pretty solid. We have some pretty solid settings. Our graphics and ultra preset mainly because this is a bottleneck of the CPU on the bespoke mini PC um, and not a graphical issue so we can max out the settings and this is probably a lot of the same problem for most of you out there unless you're running a X3D chip you're gonna get bottlenecked by your CPU in this game it's just so CPU heavy uh, and not well optimized in that regard and that's when lossless scaling comes into a huge effect one cool thing about using windows if you swipe from this bottom left hand corner like that you can get you can do the multi screen gestures i'm assuming the lossless scaling that's working on steam os needs to run on the desktop mode um i haven't tested it out or seen any videos about it but I'm sure it's going to be very similar to the way it works on uh, Windows in, in that regard. So, loss of scaling is pretty simple. Remember, this is running natively on the Steam Deck. We're just going to use adaptive frame gen at uh, 90. Uh, we're using LSFG 3.1. We don't have any scaling on. There's no point of doing scaling. We are rendering at 900p in the game. Um, not, not the native resolution, so slightly higher. So, we're just going to hit scale come back in here and you'll see it pop up so right there 60 to 90 frames I know it's probably difficult for you to see it but it's there we are actually using frame generation on the Steam Deck OLED which is it's great it's especially for a game like this and as you can see the latency is not very noticeable here on the ship have done some testing with this and I'm not gonna lie it's pretty freaking amazing it's pretty freaking amazing the game uh, runs actually fairly well considering um, we are not only considering we're not only streaming over moonlight but we actually added another cog to the machine with uh, loss of scaling to increase latency so there's like latency on top of latency and Considering the amount of latency we're getting uh, versus the performance, I think, in my opinion, it's worthwhile. You know, for a game like Helldivers 2 that is so demanding overall for the system, let's get a drone. I think this is definitely um, worth it, in my opinion. The one thing I really dislike about Windows right now is the screen brightness i haven't figured out how to adjust the screen there are some tools that you can download that allows you to adjust everything i haven't done that yet uh i've just been just testing how well uh moonlight and loss of scaling works and just a quick reminder so we're streaming the game over moonlight from the mini pc 
uh, to the Steam Deck and on the Steam Deck we have lossless scaling turned on. So we're getting 40 frames in game and then we're upscaling or frame generating to 90 with lossless scaling so we're doubling more than doubling our frames. It is somewhat noticeable now at 40 but when it drops to 30 it's very noticeable. Just for your information we are on level 5 grade. One thing I've noticed that they, I don't know if it's because of the resolution, meaning the size of the screen, but the tearing on the crosshairs is very, I think it's it's there, but it's so unnoticeable since the screen is so small. It's like I said, you, if you had a beast machine, like I think for sure my main rig could do 90 frames on this game and I could just use that but remember the reason why you don't use that is because it pulls like almost a thousand watts to run that machine versus the mini PC which only does about 250 and I don't mind leaving that thing idle I do not want my main rig constantly idle so that's the reason for uh, a workaround like this uh, mainly to keep that thing going you know it's not I don't want it running if I don't I'm not using it So as you can see, the gameplay in general is no issue. So you'll you'll see right here on the screen it says Unbound Common Sample. That's the controllers. They're kind of so. What what's going on here is there there's an issue with Windows, and this is a big issue because it makes it almost unusable uh, when it's not working. Um, there's two controllers working at the same time. So you have a, whatever, for whatever reason, it sees everything as a, uh, a PlayStation controller, um, the Steam Deck, and it doesn't work properly. So you download a software that allows it to see it as an Xbox 360, and it works. But, for whatever reason, the system thinks there's two controllers hooked up at the same time, meaning it thinks the Steam Deck controllers is not only a PlayStation, Oh my god, my teammate killed me. It's not only a PlayStation controller, but an Xbox controller at the same time. And that really messes it all up. I know there's a fix for that. I just haven't figured it out or I haven't done enough digging on it. But if you can get over that hurdle, it's actually not that bad of experience. And also, booting into Windows is super fast in comparison to SteamOS. Because sleep function doesn't work as well. But... I'm never putting it down and putting it, picking it up back up. I usually put my Steam Deck down um, and I don't pick it up for the next evening or like 24 hours later or even a couple of days later. So I always tend to turn it off anyways. So that's not a big issue for me. And remember, this is dual boot Steam Deck, so I could use SteamOS whenever. But yeah, you can see that. It's like 90 frames is just, it's looking, it's good. It feels good. You can see my hands moving, the controller. I do notice some, some latency here and there. Um, but it's not bad. It's just not bad to me. It, it feels good. It's definitely playable. The long pans. Um, here's where you notice it. I'm going to show you guys where it's most noticeable. Right here. You see that? When we're scrolling up and down. That's when you can see the frame generation. There you go. You can see it, the tearing on the yellow uh, box. That's frame generation right there. But other than that, it's like it's it's gold. It's it's like it's a really 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 good experience. And this is like a really hard game to to use frame generation on. This is a game that I wouldn't even recommend using frame generation just because it is a shooter and it's super action packed. But because it's so heavily demanding, um, the game itself, it's nice to have frame generation. God, that's sh constantly shooting me from behind. God, okay, that's enough. It's hard to play. I'm too far away from the screen. I'm just, I'm, I'm causing more harm than good. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, that's my, it, it works. It works super well. This is clearly not for everyone. There is a lot of faff to go around here, and it's not the easiest thing to get working right away. But once you get it working properly, it actually is a pretty smooth experience. Um, having Windows and OS is great as well. Um, just because, you know, you can go back and forth easily. Certain things that you need to do on Windows. Um, for example, if you need to 
download things like um, like Rufus things like of that nature if you need to use Windows to make something so that you could use it on your Steam Deck a lot of times I'll make like Windows recoveries or Steam OS recoveries and I need a Windows PC now rather than turning on my main rig I can just switch into Windows mode here um, and then do everything on there so this, there's there's some good takeaways on it Windows is useful if you have the hard drive space I definitely think a dual boot system is good it's just nice to have another Windows PC when you do need Windows and if you're playing a game that you want to use loss of scaling on it's that's just a great add-on on top of that yes it's clunky because it's Windows um, yes things aren't working properly because it's Windows but it's better than not having it right it's better not having it and then as soon as the the loss of scaling over um, Steam OS gets finalized or I have the time to mess around with it I'm definitely gonna try that out um, but still I probably still would still have some windows on this machine just because there's just things that you need or want to do on windows all the time and you know so it's not one or or the other I think it's just you use the tool for what is it intended for and you don't need necessarily to pick a side because I feel like what's happening a lot in this especially in the Steam Deck community is people choose a side they're like Steam OS or nothing I'm just like, why are you picking sides? It's a tool. It's something you pay for. It's a tool. Why not get both the best of both worlds? Use one for the other, and then don't, and then use the other one when you need it. It's 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 the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I don't know why people pick sides uh, <laughs> on on tools of all things, um, but it is what it is. I'm just saying that it works. It freaking works. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you guys for watching. If you made it this long, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.